put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, Mood View. Jesse and Hector, two Latino best friends, have just graduated from college. They have the, their whole lives ahead of them, so naturally they get high, reenact jackass stunts, and yeah, in general, behave like typical young people. There is a woman who everyone in the in the neighborhood thinks is a, a witch, a bruja. And one day she ups and dies and weird things start happening. All of them centered on Jesse and the he, he appears to be getting some supernatural powers, abilities. It, it goes quite chronicle, actually, with them testing his abilities on camera and such. And I suppose that's pretty much it for the plot and yeah, so this is this is a spin-off of the main Paranormal Activity franchise because, you know, three movies in the main franchise was enough. Shut up, there's only three movies in the main franchise. And for a lot of this film, it does seem to only really have a tenuous connection to the main franchise. And, yeah, it's basically, I don't know, I might, perhaps later films will prove me wrong on this, but I do think that if one of them can be skipped for, you know, when you try to get, like, the overall story of what's going on with the paranormal activity, the, 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 the term, not the, the movies. This one might be the one that you would lose the least by skipping, but... Which is not to say it's bad. It's a lot better than the fourth movie that did, didn't actually happen. And... Yeah, I... Basically, a lot of it has to do with how it presents itself, what kind of movie it is. It's not quite the same as the four movies. This isn't the, the slow possession of one of the main characters and with you know, eerie stuff happening around them. Basically, yeah, like I said, Jesse just wakes up and has superpowers and sure he doesn't you know, it's not like immediately obvious that there's something something truly sinister going on with that, but it's... The film is a bit showier than the others, where the others gradually increased in how... You know, in... in they, they showed little things, and gradually, as the films, you know, by the fourth one, for example, it was pretty direct in, okay, now we're actually seeing some pretty messed up stuff literally happening on screen, where, yeah, a lot of it is just hints at something, and in this one you do 
see stuff actually happening. The and and you know we again have the the demonic love bite on the arm and you know this particular demon. I mean. They're all quite bad romantic partners, but this one isn't the typical passive-aggressive one that'll, you know, make a kitchen explode there and shove, a, you know, to crack up a, a picture frame there. No, this is more like the straight-up abusive relationship kind of thing where, you know, yeah, bad, bad stuff happens. I'm trying not to give too much away. I guess I could... Yeah, some of what you see in the trailers does indeed happen. We, you know, Jesse gets jumped by a couple of... <laughs> not too nice people. Although, to begin with, they do offer, you know, a game of two-on-two -two basketball. So, I don't know, maybe the, you know, maybe they're erupted a disagreement on the rules of the game. But yeah, they jump him and he like flings them through the air with ease and then later he's like, I don't even remember what happened. So yeah, clearly some, some bad stuff's going down and this time we also very much have this thing of, you can't really deny it. There's, there's no, you know, it's not like, well, those footprints in the on the floor could have come from something else or that kind of no no this is this is clearly something's going on here and is is not natural now the and and there is a it's it's pretty effective how Hector sees his friend slowly becoming unrecognizable to him this you know it, it comes across quite nicely how good friends they are early on, and then as the film progresses, you know, and, and there are other, you know, there, there are signs that things are going, that there's something sinister going on by, for example, the the, the dog, the little yappy dog, Is, maybe a chihuahua, actually, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, the, the, the dog, sh sh chavo, chavo, something like that who literally like growls and runs away when when Jesse approaches it and uh, yeah things like that this is directed by the writer from you know 2 through 4 and it's like his second movie he does quite well there really wasn't anything you know we get the you know di directorially Excuse me. Other than aforementioned, you know, where the excuse me style is different, you know, from a directorial standpoint, this is pretty close to the the others. We get a couple of the obvious jump scares, kind of to say, yeah, we know jump scares. It's you know, it's it's so expected. You just gotta do like one or two that are just really lame. Other than that, it's you know the stuff that scares you in the film is stuff that's actually scary, is is not just these things that there's no payoff to. Well, there's maybe one thing where it's kind of just... yeah. Anyway, now, the... I read that there was supposed to be secret footage from the third one and that it delves deeper into the ritual that started the paranormal activity. I don't know if this was like edited for for Denmark. <sighs> but I I really didn't see any any of that. The you know, I'm not saying that absolutely no one and nothing from the other films show up in this, but it really didn't add a whole heck of a lot. Now and, and also I read that this movie was supposed to be like 98 minutes. It was 75 minutes. Not not like a huge problem, just... Uh, yeah. Anyway. Now, the... 
I, sh I should maybe expand some on the, the, the approach of they, they are, you know, as usual, they're, they're trying to discover what's, what's really going on. And they go to the place of, I think her name is Anna, which, yeah, the, 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 the Bruja. And she, yeah, she had an interesting hobby or two. They, they find some really messed up stuff in her apartment and, yeah, they, they delve some, some into what's, what's really causing all this and what's, what's going on. Now, the, I gotta talk about some of my, there, there are some characters in this I absolutely loved, like, I think it's Jesse's grandmother, his, he's got this abuela called Irma, she is badass, it's just, that's, that's like, yeah, one of the, one of the coolest grandmothers you've ever seen, just, she, you know, there, there's, there's this bit where they're like, you know, pretty pretty sure it's like tequila. You know, Jesse's like, oh come on, you gotta do, you know, he he takes the little shot thing. She has one too. He just he fills it up to the to the very brim. It's like practically you know running down between her fingers. You know, both of them do the, and she drinks every last drop down with the and you know, and she makes a, a noise. I can't quite. Repeated, but but yeah, it's like you know, and then yeah, just in general, she's she's really cool. And then there's this guy. He's like the the film knows that we're gonna anticipate the gang cliche. So yes, of course they know someone who's in a gang. This guy named Arturo, and he's just badass with the tats and the yeah, he's he's. He's pretty badass, and yeah, I I'm really not gonna give too much away about him. Now, I think that might be more or less it. The ending is not that satisfying, and it also feels. I, sh I shouldn't go too much into detail in this video. In in general, just the the third act is where some some weaknesses of the film start. It's there's there's maybe a bit of a genre shift, and yeah, it was it was entertaining, but. It it didn't quite fit the what what came before it. Now the yeah I suppose that pretty well covers it. It's it's quite well acted. The characterization is good. You, you know, get into the various characters get an idea of what the what these characters world is like it's like I, like I said it's not quite like the the first four this one does more like show their world as well the you know they they go just you know driving around the neighborhood at one point with with the camera right there you know the and yeah the, the film isn't It's like that. Not not everything in the film is centered around the you know the the paranormal activity, as it were. It's yeah, and and even after 
it's not only that. Like they're they're doing other things and going other places. It's it's what drives the plot forward, but it's yeah, it's not the only thing that I suppose that's it. Yeah, you're you're never bored. It's the scares tend to be earned, and yeah, it's it's nice that they're trying something different. That the yeah, the the way they were going, it it kind of seemed like you know the the fourth one, yeah. So so it's good that they're kind of saying okay, let's. Let's try to reinvigorate this whole, you know, found footage thing and this, what is it, by now, six-year-old franchise, you know, five films strong. You gotta do something different, mix it up a bit. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.